be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has risen, the door locked, then you will stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company, and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets of the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out, and people will come from east and the west and from the north and the south and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was a, a child, I had a, my bicycle and I was learning how to uh, ride my bike with no hands and um, and I practice going around the neighborhood it's about a mile to go around the whole neighborhood the circumference of the neighborhood uh, so I went around the whole neighborhood about a mile riding my bike with no hands no problem doing all the turns and everything else and I did really well so I figured I'm just going to show off I'm going to show off to my friends you know, some of my other friends are really good at showing off, and they just came out looking like roses, you know. And, um, and so I was going to show off in front of my friends, and as soon as I let go of the handlebars, boom. I'm like, I hit the pavement immediately. I don't think a second went by. And, you know, it's like, okay. You know, I realized, you know, God was telling me something. I could, it's like I could hear Jesus say, you know, don't show off. That's prideful. Don't do that. And I remember thinking, yeah, you're right, Jesus. I shouldn't have showed off, you know. And um, I, I never really was good at showing off. I always, I could do things fine, and then all of a sudden I'd show off, and it just, it crashed and burned. So um, I gave that up at a young age, and that was the last time I tried showing off. So, um, but we always got to remind ourselves, too, you know, like a lot of people think that if, if something bad happens to them, they think that God did it to them, that somehow God is angry with them or um, that they have no chance for salvation at all, and they kind of go in that direction. And, and that's not what it's about. When we get correction from God, it's correction from God, and the correction is motivated out of love, just like correction out of the parent should be motivated out of love, out of love for that child. And so we are God's children. And so we rejoice that God gives us that correction. Because, you know, a crash and burn on a bicycle is a lot easier than one of the hard life's lessons later in life. Where we beat ourselves against the head and against the wall and just, uh, we end up suffering big time. Whether it's divorce, and things like that, um, the big heartaches of life. And so we thank God that God is always there uh, correcting us and encouraging us to strive to enter through the narrow gates. You know, we have to strive to enter through the narrow gates. So God corrects us because it's not easy. It's not easy to get into heaven. They're asked, you know, Lord, will only a few people be saved? Well, it's really hard, he tells them. It's, it's not easy. And quite frankly, humanly speaking, it's impossible. Jesus even said that. Humanly speaking, 
It is impossible. By our mere humanity, we cannot get to heaven. We need God's grace. It is through God's grace that we can even enter into heaven. And so, you know, we can't say God owes us anything because of the works we've done. So how does the salvation come about? Some people might say it's all about faith. All faith, no works at all. Well, no, that's not what it is. Jesus says, even here, depart from me, you evil doers. So it proves here it's not faith alone. Those who do evil get condemned. So um, we are judged upon our actions. So we can't just say faith alone, but we can say works alone. Because that's, that's not what it's about. Even these people here who are asking, they were the, like the faithful followers, right? And, and even you know, those who said, Master, uh, um, open the door for us. I do not know where you're from. We ate and drank in your company. You taught us in your streets. And even in other places, you know, uh, we even did miracles. But that doesn't mean we're getting into heaven. You know, so it's not like the once saved, always saved. Oh, I know I got it. I'm done. Good me, you know. Woof, poofty. I'm in heaven. No, that's not what it is. It's you have faith and you believe, and that inspires your work. And so it's faith and works, and you're asking God's grace to be there with you. You are cooperating with God's grace. It's like building a house. I'll give the example. You have hands, you have fingers, you have arms, you have legs, you have feet and toes. But that in itself does not build a house. You need tools. And the nature of the humanity, the fingers, the toes and its feet and its legs and its arms, cannot in itself obtain the house. You need the materials. You need the tools. God gives us the tools. He supplies from what we lack. And then we cooperate with God's grace. And if you're baptized, you even get the pneumatic tools, the air tools, right? Right? The air gun. The breath of God operating those machines. And now we do a job well done. Because you don't want to just build a shack, right? You know, some people are like, oh, if I just make it into heaven, if I just have a shack in the heaven. Well, Jesus says, store up your treasures in heaven. How do you do that? By building your house through your works, through what you do in faith. In faith. If it works without faith, it means nothing. It has to be done in faith. Both of them together. So when you love God in faith, and you do these works, you're building your treasure in heaven, and you're building a mansion for yourself with God's grace, because God supplies the materials. He supplies what you need. We cannot do it. And so that's how we cooperate with God's grace. And we do not judge ourselves. Paul even says that he himself does not judge himself in Scripture. So he doesn't even judge himself. So we don't judge ourselves as being saved. Where it's our decision, we make ourselves saved, but we leave it to God. And so when we leave it to God, it's not like, oh, no, I don't know if I'm going to make it to heaven. It's we have confidence in God's promise. That's faith. If I say I am saved, duh, past tense, then I don't exercise the virtue of hope. Because hope is hoping for the attainment you have not received yet. And Paul, in, in, in the scripture, says, give a reason for your hope. We have our hope in Jesus Christ. And so we do have a certitude to trust in him and our salvation. We rejoice in that awesome gift that Jesus is offering us, entering into a relationship with him. Not something where we demand and say, you owe me this salvation, or you have given these in salvation, I am, and therefore it is, and I expect Jesus. No, it's a relationship. Everything is a gift. Everything is a gift from God in this relationship. And so we enter in this relationship with Jesus Christ with hope, with faith, with love. 
And there we, we work out our faith with fear and trembling, as Scripture says. Not just work alone, but with faith and because we love Jesus. And so we rejoice in that gift that God would give us all these gifts. And we know that when he reprimands us, it's for our good. And we have faith in that. And it's for our eternal salvation. Even, believe it or not, excommunication is not meant to be something permanent. Excommunication was developed in history because of the politicians, the kings, and the dukes. They would take advantage of the poor. And so the church had to say, hey, you're excommunicated to get them to shock them and say, oh, I got to get back in line. And so they would amend their ways and be back in the, in the church. That's what excommunication is all about. It's a way of shocking somebody to say, hey, you are outside the life of God's grace, and now come back. And so when God reprimands us, it is not out of evil, it is not out of hatred. It is out of love. And so he invites us to strive, to strive for something worth striving for, heaven, to be with God and his love and to experience his love for all eternity. That is what he created us for. He did not create us for you know, the best job in the world, to have all the toys, to... Yeah, that's great. He might have created those things for us so that we can get to heaven, but we're not created for them. They're created for us. We are made for God. And so this is what we strive for. And this is what we endeavor to do, to strive for God, for the love of God who is well worth it.